It's Madden NFL 22, where division rivals will clash in the NFC South. It's the Falcons and the Bucks, and it's coming up next. Now we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gordon alongside the one and only Charles Davis and CD. Lots of compelling storylines in a game like this. Let's take a look at some of the numbers for these two offenses. And I'm glad you brought up the numbers because sometimes it's hard to quantify a team's performance solely by judging the numbers. But I think with these two teams, what you see is a pretty accurate representation of who they are. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go from Tampa. Williams now on the return. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And leading them out there, we get a look at their 6-3 quarterback. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner, ordering snacks. I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now, after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. Second and six. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup Nowhere. leaves him with third Absolutely. and one. Nowhere. Now after the running play, we've got a man down on the field. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. An early test. Two plays in. This is third and two. Off play action. Ryder. He'll get this into the hands of Bird. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That throw is not going to get him a whole lot, but that really didn't matter, did it? They got what they needed on that throw. Picked up the first down, and 
I'm going cliche here. Game of inches, partner. Absolutely. Well, and you talked to me a lot about opening drives, how key those are to set the tone. You kept the drive alive. Third down conversion here's big. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They try the left side here with Williams. And now they're going to get him down right at the line of scrimmage. That's how we do, no how gain we do on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. From the gun, Ryder. And that will be incomplete. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. The Falcons send out their punter. As the first drive of the game stalls out, he's on to punt. Fair catch called for and made right at the 25-yard line. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Always fun to get a peek at Tom Brady as he gets in place to command this offense for Tampa Bay. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now. But how about his most impressive accomplishment? Moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff arm father time the way that he has. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Brady. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free and it's second down. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. Throwing is Brady on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Back deep, Demir Bird. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? On first down, Ryder. This one swung out to Williams. And he'll go out of bounds, it looks like, right at the 40. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now a handoff, here's Williams. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. 
Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. On first and 10, Ryder. He's going to let one fly for Tate. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Picked by Antoine Winfield Jr. And the Bucs will take over here at their own 14-yard line. The rookie was trying to push it downfield, but the safety bit him. And he'll learn that you have to hold the safety. And you do that with your head movement, your eyes, sometimes your shoulders. Hold the safety so that you can get back to the throw that you really want to make. He got so excited thinking his guy was open that he made it easy for the defensive back to go get the football. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They'll begin here with Bernard. And he'll work this forward for about three. It's second down. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run, all right? It was kind of stacked up, found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. Second down and seven. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. Oh, Fournette loses it. It's out. And the Falcons grab it. And yeah, they'll have great field position here as the ball will be at the 15-yard line. There are two words that we hear coaches say all of the time. One starts with a B. One starts with an S. Ball security. And they preach it. They, they have it up in, in, in meeting rooms, right? You see the signs. They talk about it all the time. But still, when you've got defenders out there who are preaching, hey, we're going to take the ball away from you, no matter what position you play, you've got to take care of the rock. A first chance in the red zone for the Falcons now. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. Following the fumble recovery, Ryder. And his throw's going to be incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And this will be caught by Edwards. Five yards, now it's third and five. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. They had great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. Back to throw. Ryder. And he's got it. Touchdown, Falcons. On and Tate from 10 yards out. And the Falcons are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. Solid response that time by a young quarterback. Last drive interception. This drive, the touchdown pass. I like how you described it. Solid because you don't get extra kudos for bouncing back if you're going to be a big-time quarterback. You're supposed to do that. But at the same time, when you're a rookie, that's not guaranteed, is it? Sometimes they hang their heads and they go in the tank a little bit. Not in this case. Bounced back, took his team downfield, and threw a touchdown pass. Extra point by Koo, up and good. And that makes the score 7-0.
Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And the decision to bring it out, not a good one, as he's tackled at the 15. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Brady going to bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 15. Throwing to start the drive. Brady. It's caught by Mike Evans. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now Brady. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. From midfield, here's Brady. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. That's what you're going to need to do against those big receivers. You got to get in there and get physical with them. That time he got in close, got in tight, and knocked the ball away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Brady. Again for Evans. This time he's got him. And this will be stopped at the 44. That one good for seven yards. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first and ten, here's Brady. Getting it out wide here to Bernard. So the completion good for seven there. And it'll be second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, here's Fournette. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They were not fooling around at all, were they? Second and short, and they brought out the heavy package. Almost felt like the super heavy package against that defense, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think they expected that much beef up front, and it turned into an easy first down conversion. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Going right side here, and that's complete. That catch good for only a couple.
After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter now in Tampa Bay. It's the Buccaneers in control of the football as they've got a second and eight forthcoming. to Fournette and here he'll get it down to the seven and there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps you don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon seven-yard touchdown grab and the Buccaneers are an extra point away from tying up this football game and in the red zone I guess this is why you have a guy like that on your roster without a doubt and if you have him you use him because he's a guy who's going to win just about every time I don't care what the coverage is Ryan suck up on for the point after It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. The 10 play drive that time, and it ends with a touchdown for the Bucs. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Williams to return. And all deep in his own territory, he coughs up the football. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Bucs. Well, that's got to be so disappointing for a defense. You, know, you force the fumble. I think you got a chance at a turnover, and instead, not only do you give up the football, you also give up a touchdown as well. Yeah, you just think to yourself, you've done all the hard work, right? You forced the fumble, but when they didn't come up with it, I think they relaxed a little bit, or maybe lost their focus as well, and it ended up turning out to be a touchdown against them. Extra point try now for Saka. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Atlanta regains possession of the football. That's 7-0 lead of theirs, short-lived, as they've now given up two straight touchdowns to fall behind by seven. Yeah, but no cause for discouragement here. Yeah, they've fallen behind, but haven't they proven that they can go down and score? So what was the formula that got them down there the first time? Get back to something close to that, and maybe they can get this game tied up. Go. 
They start the drive on the ground. It's Williams. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on the early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Looking to throw. Ryder. That's into the hands of Pitts, the tight end. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. to throw. Ryder. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I love it. He ran a hitch route on third and six. And normally that's not deep enough to get your first down. I'd say he really ran a hitch plus to make sure he got the first down yardage. Really intelligent route running. Yeah, because what do you say? Hitches are normally one to three? Yeah, somewhere in the neighborhood. You just kind of come off the line of scrimmage and kind of show yourself to the quarterback and say, hey, here I am, present it. He went ahead and took it far enough downfield to make sure that they had enough yardage to pick up the first down. They'll run on first down. It's Patterson. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. That's what I'm talking about. Well, sometimes it's hard to take your eyes off this guy at the linebacker position. He can really cover some ground, and he did there to make that play. And sometimes all of your best laid plans of play design, your X's and O's, they can't always account for individual effort defensively. And this was one of those times. Just a terrific play to hustle over there and get the running back to the ground. And the next-gen stats, they tell the story as he was approaching 19 miles an hour on that one. They stay on the ground this time. It's Williams. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. The Falcons on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Looking to throw. Ryder. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they're already in the red zone. The 18-yard line is where they take over. Every week we hear talk about create turnovers, create turnovers. In particular, they wanted to force some fumbles. They got one right there. And it shows you how the game has changed over time. It used to be good enough for a guy to get a sack of the quarterback in the pocket. Now, if you come to the sidelines and you didn't knock the ball free, your coaches are upset with you, all right? So if you're a quarterback, it starts all the way back in the youth leagues. Take care of the ball, take care of the ball, take care of the ball, because here come the defenders. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Brady to Evans on the slam. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. And it's caught. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple of seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't even do know why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, Take the points and keep moving.
suck up for the extra point. It's good, and it is now 21 to 7. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory. Excellent field position. Two plays later, Pater. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Here's Damian Williams making his way back out. They've given him some touches. They haven't had a lot of success on the ground. Do you maybe keep going to that well, or do you mix it up more? I think you mix it up more, try and loosen things up. Get the defense to react to other people, other plays, but don't forget about it. That's your horse. You know, Secretariat lost twice in his career. <laughs> so educational. That's very true, kids. Look it up. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Ryder. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Partner, he was going through his progressions. Not there, not there. After about the third one, he decided he better pull it down and run for it. And he slides down and avoids the hit for good measure. On second down now, it's Williams. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Back to throw. Ryder. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe-tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy-toes if that one was completed. The Falcons on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Looking to throw. Ryder. Throw right side, complete to Williams. Yeah, that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? The Falcons send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. It'll wind up just a 35-yard punt, no return, and the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Again, we see Tom Brady in the box set to take over, and he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence, does a great deal for your team, gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Mike five, four, Mike five, back and reload. 
On second down, Bernard. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Now they're staring at a third and eight. That last play, backwards a yard. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there, forcing a loss on that play. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. Brady's throw on third down there is incomplete. Yeah. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he'll punt it away for the second time. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and the Falcons will get it first and 10 from deep in their own territory. Here he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. Now, Charles, it's the second quarter. Your team's losing. You're not playing well as the quarterback, but... Like I said, it's the second quarter, so how worried right now are you? You're concerned, but you're not panicked because you know there's still an opportunity. No one's excited about his stat line right now. One touchdown pass, okay, that's cool, but he's throwing an interception as well. Can he eliminate the mistakes and keep making the positive plays, the good plays? That's what they're looking for from him. Time to find out if he can do just that. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Here's second and ten. To throw again. Ryder. He's got it to Williams. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. From the gun on third down, Ryder. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. A big play that time through the air. 37 yards. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the big play moves them all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Well, the incompletion, yes, but maybe here not the worst thing in the world? No, not on first and 10. Actually gives them a chance to regroup, relax just a little bit. They huddle up, talk it over. Then they get a chance to continue their drive.
After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll look to throw again. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. Pass the 20. And he returns it to the end zone. A fumble recovery touchdown for the Box. This first half has been a nightmare for that offense. Defense just dominating them. And when you're picking up the ball, picking up their mistakes, and taking it the other way and putting it in the end zone, that's a defense's dream. They're having that type of a game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for this offensive unit. Extra point try now for Saka. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So not only the cough-up, but then the pickup on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Taken at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Go. Here we go. Here we go. And the Falcons now going to go on offense late in this first half. And with a three-score deficit staring him in the face, they might have to press the issue here and try to get points out of this drive. Throwing on first down, Ryder. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it, and it's second down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. They look for Pitts again. This time he's got it. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Five yards. Now it's third and five. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. From the gun on third down. Ryder, and that is incomplete. Oh, he did everything but hold on to it. But a nice play defensively, and now it brings up fourth down. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. That's pulled in at the 32. It'll be 37 yards there on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. Leonard Fournette and the rest of the Bucs offense set to take over once more. It's the second quarter. His team has the lead, but... I think he's hoping for a little bit more production out of himself. And we often talk about preaching patience to a runner when things are a little bumpy in the early going. But we have to do the same thing with the offensive line. They can't wait to halftime to make the adjustments. They have to do it from series to series. So those surface tablets come into play. <laughs> Check out what the defense is doing and see if they can find a better way to run it. So they search for that patience here now. Brady now on first down. And a 
eventually taken down here. Great coverage downfield. John Kaminsky able to run him down for a loss of 12 that time. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we send you a stone's throw away across I-4 to Orlando, there standing by is Jonathan Coachman, ready with our EA Sport. We now proceed to the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. And the first half definitely went their way, and this would seem to be a great opportunity to kind of put this game a little closer out of reach with a score here. Yeah, and it's a wonderful opportunity for them because if they can add seven more to their lead before the other guys even see the football, that could be the decisive blow in this game. I think that's how they're eyeing it. That's how they're approaching it. And Brady and the Buccaneers here first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Brady. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Throwing again on second down. Brady, throw left side complete. That's Evans. And they're able to get this one across the 35. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Here's a give to Fournette. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. And a catch right side by Evans. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. third down Bernard and yeah, boy he is very close to a first down but from where they're spotting that football he's going to be a foot or so short only a yard of the pick up there and it's going to leave them with a fourth down from this vantage point they've got the lead here so for me that'd be enough to go ahead and punt the football and let my defense defend the long field if you go for it you don't get it then you really put your defense in a tight spot yeah but we never know what people ultimately will decide to do here on fourth and inches here's Bradley Pena now 
as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. On first down, Ryder. Looking deep downfield. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, Falcons! Demir Bird, fine work there on the touchdown run. And the Falcons get a bit closer. We saw this plenty last year in college. He loved to take his shots downfield, and that throw, that was a thing to behold there. And as that ball was hanging in the air with the receiver streaking downfield to meet it, here in the stadium, you can just sense the crowd thinking, oh, no! And their worst fears were realized as that one turned into a long touchdown. Ku able to connect on the extra point, and the lead will be cut down to 14. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Let's go, boys. Bring it up. And here we go again with Tom Brady in Tampa's offense. He's played well. Good first half. He's continued that here in the third quarter. But my question, when you're a head coach, what do you look at stat line wise for your court? Do you go right to turnovers? You really do. As much as coaches don't want to talk about that, that's where it starts. When I played in college, our first rule for every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. And that's kind of how they judge you. Do you take care of the ball, not turn it over, keep it in the proper hands, and give your team a chance to win? Well, that's what he's done here in this one so far. Meanwhile, Brady's throw complete here, pulled in by Brady. And the ball is knocked out, and the Falcons grab it. So potentially a turning point here in the third quarter as that swings the door back open just a bit. Yeah, they're still down two scores, but I do think with that point in the game where you're going to reach for the football whenever possible, you're going to hear the coaches scream from the sidelines, tackle him, second guy in, tackle the ball. Following the fumble recovery, Ryder firing quickly here, and that's complete. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be second and very short. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Back to throw, Ryder under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. Shaquille Barrett picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Well, they had the right down and the definite distance to take a shot downfield but it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if, if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad, but a loss like that, you can't, you can't take a sack there. Yeah, absolutely. The one thing you cannot do, 
they did. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Looking to throw, Ryder. It's caught on the right side, Williams. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Now a first and 10 at the 11. Back to throw. Ryder. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Three yards the game there, second down. Well, speed is definitely a calling card if you play cornerback in this league, and he does a terrific job there of hustling in quickly to make the play. And I think really good defenders can sniff out those screen passes, just something that they can feel, something that they can sense about how the quarterback drops back or how the linemen are just a little slow to block the oncoming rushers. He read it perfectly, got in there, and made the play. On second down now, it's Patterson. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Cordero Patterson taking it in from seven yards away. And the Falcons draw a bit closer. People always talk about one of his biggest strengths, running the football vision, and he found the spot there, went into the end zone. You're exactly right about that. And it wasn't just the vision, right? Once he saw the gap, decisiveness made up his mind and about the power to finish the play not only did he get good blocking he created his own space as well extra point by Koo up and good and that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown five plays there on that drive and in the end it's capped off by a seven yard run Following the touchdown, here's Koo to kick off. This one fielded at the five. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now the Buccaneers offensive unit back out on the field. And last drive, obviously not what you're looking for. You've got the lead. You've got to protect the football. So in other words, someone got lucky because they've been moving the ball really well and wearing them down. In this case, though, giving up the football doesn't make them very happy. They can't wait to get back out there and atone for it. Yeah, try to atone for it here on this drive. We couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. They begin with a run by Fournette. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On play action, it's Brady. And break, the tight end's got it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That was a route run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. Throwing on first down is Brady. 
And the timing a bit off that time as that one falls to the ground. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. To throw once more on second and ten, Brady. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. And now offensively, it's third and ten, and I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller's thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. And Brady's throw there, incomplete. And that's a really good job there defensively. They went into this possession knowing that they needed to get a stop. They're in a tight ball game, and they got it done. Great work to force the three and out. Got the football right back for their offense. They've got to go to the sidelines feeling pretty good about themselves and encouraging their offensive mates to get some points. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. On the return, it's Bird. A 40-yard punt, five yards on the return. And possession will switch. Hands first and ten. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They're going to start to drive here on the ground with Patterson. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Second and two. Looking to throw. Ryder steps away to his left. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. As a rookie quarterback, that's exactly how you endear yourself to your teammates. Give it up for the cause. It's also how you end up on the training table, too. Yeah, it's a catch-22. Coach doesn't like it. Teammates love it. Where do you fall on it? Well, I fall on wanting to endear yourself to your teammates, but pick your spots. Be smart about it. They need you for the full season. Yeah, the rookie's going to learn as he goes. A throw over the middle, taken in. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now a second down and six. Back to throw. Ryder. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Vita Vea breaking through to get him to the ground. It's a loss of seven. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. The Falcons on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is going to be third and 13. Open man is Edwards. He's got it. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. 
The Falcons send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. So possession goes over here on the punt. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. And right now, probably just one thing in his mind, it's getting back to the hot start because he's really faded. And ordinarily when that happens, the quarterback, as you know, is usually the leader of the squad. Now there's probably a, a silent camaraderie that comes around him saying, hey, guess what? We've got you. Don't worry about it. Let's go, big fella, because they know more times than not, he tends to pick things up, and they tend to play well. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And that one drops down incomplete. Good coverage there. Forced the ball free, and it's second down. It's another zone defense. It looks like it's open for possibilities, but they did a nice job patrolling the middle of the field and forcing an incompletion. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Brady going to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. They have to like what they've done defensively here at the outset of this drive. They forced a couple of incomplete passes, bring up a third and ten. Don't be surprised to bring a little pressure on this snap. The Bucks on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and ten. Here's Brady to throw. Under pressure, and down he goes. And that's Grady Jarrett who forced his way through to register the sack. A third and long, you knew that he was going to throw it. He just couldn't find anybody to throw it to. Yeah, and it shouldn't have been a surprise, but that was perfect execution of their nickel defense. That fifth defensive back, the extra defender, he really tightened up things downfield in coverage, and they were able to get to him in the pocket. Here's Bradley Pinion now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Oh, nice move. <laughs> so a change of possession here on the punt. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. Atlanta prepped and readied for its next possession. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Very good starting field position for the Falcons' offense as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So how do you stop a jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. Coming up on second and seven. Operating from the gun, Ryder. And incomplete. So many times we've seen him try to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Looking to throw. Ryder. Oh, he's going to go for it all. This to Pitts, and he's got him. Touchdown, Atlanta. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And you'd think on third down, they'd just be looking for something right beyond the sticks. And I think they caught the defense flat-footed as a result because they decided they were going to take a shot right there, and it ended up being a big play. And to put a bow on it, next-gen stats saying that traveled an even 66 yards in the air. Don't 
don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And, partner, we've got a tie game here in the fourth. So right back to square one, tied at 28 as he kicks it away. And there will not be a return here. It's a touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Bucks now. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Brady throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. So the incompletion, and now it's second and 10, again from the 25-yard line. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The Bucks on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. This is third and eight. Throwing now is Brady. And that is incomplete. The defense did their job. Fourth quarter, big stand. No doubt about it because the offense has been yelling at him from the sideline. Just do us a favor. Get us the ball back. Give us one more chance to take it downfield. The defense just did them a solid, it appears. And when they get the ball back, they can kind of play free tie game. They're not behind. Here's Bradley Pinion now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Oh, a heck of a oh, move. man. Keep playing hard. Atlanta now coming out on the field. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity, all tied in the fourth quarter. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. They begin the drive with Williams. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size... This intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I can just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. On first and ten, Ryder. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw. Ryder. Now he'll let this one go, deep left sideline. I would say these defensive backs need a little bit of help from their pass rush. They were able to force the incompletion, but I'll guarantee they're going to go back to the huddle and say, hey, guys, can you get to him a little bit quicker? 
I don't know how long we can continue to cover these guys downfield. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. On third down, Ryder. And that will be incomplete as well. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. This is away, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say go. just outside the 20-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Brady gonna bring the Bucks up with a first and 10 at their own 21. And he'll begin with a give to Fournette to start the drive. And he's gonna get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you wanna call it, Seven yards on first down. That fits the bill. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Again, it's Fournette. And this time not as successful as he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. It sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's traffic around you, the only thing you think about is protecting the football, not gaining yards. And this is going to be a Bucks first down as he'll take this up to about the 33-yard line. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Now they'll throw with Brady. Evans has it left side. A gain of six there on first. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a score to break this tie. Brady's throw there complete. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. Back to throw, Brady. He's going to have the hook up to Gage. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Now how about this throw right here? Had to throw it to the left sideline, and you know the timing's got to be correct on this one. Ball's got to be right where it needs to be, and it was. That's because he had great arm strength on that one, able to drive the football. Quarterbacks love it when they can show off their arms. Fournette, a first down carry. And he's got some space here. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. Now the Falcons going to use one of their timeouts. 
And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Now Leonard Fournette. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. They'll run with Fournette. Looking for a cutback lane, but nothing there as he's met Boom. at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. Fournette. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. It's a gain of five on the play, and it'll bring up a fourth down. Have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. So some pressure now on the kicker, Ryan Suckup. This to take the lead here in the final minute. And Suckup will put this one right through. And the sideline celebrates as they have taken the lead in the final minute. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. On the return, Williams. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. So all eyes on the Falcons. Down 31-28. And time, a huge factor. They need, at minimum, three points out of this as they come up first and 10. Able to find Patterson, and he'll be out of bounds after a gain of about five. That stops the clock, but slow and steady won't win the race at this point. Complete on the deep ball. Probably time for two more shots, and ideally, they'd like to get the midfield or so, so they have a chance at a Hail Mary on the final play. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Back to throw. 
And that's incomplete. Clock stops with 10 seconds left. Fourth down now defensively. Charles, you know, they're just asking this crew for one more stop. And you know that they're feeling the momentum right now, but they have to be very careful not to get over-exuberant, over-excited, and blow an assignment and give up the big first down. One score down. Here we go. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Looking there for Pitts, but intercepted. Picked off by Levante David. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. That time defensively looked like they showed quite a bit of pressure, but backed off, and it proved fruitful. They get the pick. He went through all of his rules about getting rid of the ball quickly because he read blitz. He saw all those people stacked at the line of scrimmage, and then they fooled him by dropping into coverage. Now he's ready to get rid of the ball fast, but guess what? Too many defenders out there, exactly as you described, an interception. take a knee here and that should just about do it so time has run out on what will be a Tampa Bay victory and it wasn't really always pretty they had their bumps and bruises really both sides did but they did what they needed to do at home to get the win yeah they really had to grind this one out didn't they because nothing came easy every snap was a major league brawl they had to win at the line of scrimmage win downfield they got all those things accomplished but to win a close one like this you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game.